your neighbor, brother, or even partner, might even be you. They walked among us, yet when the green poison pandemic dropped, they left everything behind to save what remains. They are division agents. However, where did they come from? Their origin story is more complex than you could have imagined. Operation Dark Winter and Directive 51 are key to understanding the origin of the Strategic Homeland Division. So grab your popcorn, buckle up and enjoy. On June 22nd to the 23rd of 2001, the president gave permission for an operation on American soil. The directive gave way to Operation Dark Winter. Operation Dark Winter was a code name for a simulated bioterrorist attack on the continent of the United States, which took place under real conditions. The purpose of this attack? To assess shortcomings during such a national emergency. The scenario was about a smallpox attack on Oklahoma City. It got out of control soon and resulted in a national emergency. The National Security Council had to focus on locating the attack origin and had to contend with the problem of the spreading of the virus. This resulted in massive civilian casualties, a breakdown in essential institutions and civil disorder. Dark Winter showed us how vulnerable the United States have become. Shocking as this is, the government proposed preventive measures and strategies to cope with this kind of problem. On May 4, 2007, a presidential arrangement was signed that promises an assurance of specific rights in a catastrophic emergency, better known as Directive 51. It describes a location-independent incident that threatens the American people, infrastructure, environment, economy or political functions. This led to the creation of SHAPE, or SHD better known as the Strategic Homeland Division. The Strategic Homeland Division, or the Division, or even SHAPE, or SHD for short, is a response to the weaknesses and problems which have been identified during simulations like Operation Dark Winter. As part of this unit, agents were recruited into one of three branches, the Analytic, Strategic and Tactical Branch. The Analytic Branch handles information processing and data management from secured locations across the nation. The strategic branch is connected to government officials and leaders across the nation as a form of extra security and staff detail. And the tactical branch are the boots on the ground that do the field work. Those are us, the agents. There is no official ranking between agents, although every group or cell has a designated leader, a so-called commander. These agents are handpicked from various aspects of society, commonly having a background in military, intelligence, community or engineering. They are approached and recruited based on a set of unknown criteria. This to be sure the candidate is suited for the job. Once accepted, they are trained by top tier operatives until they are a self-supported tactical agent. Upon completion, they return to their daily lives as sleeper agents without anyone knowing their true nature, not even their families. But before they return, they receive their equipment. Their kit is made up of a smartwatch, a backpack with the Isaac Brick radar, Content lenses, repelling tool, flare gun, face mask, a variety of skills, a thermal bodysuit, body armor made up of six pieces, and weapons, all powered by Shade Tech, the most advanced form of technology. The smartwatch is the most important part of the kit. When deactivated, it looks like a regular watch, but once activated, the ring glows orange. It serves for communication with headquarters and other agents, as well as projecting an augmented reality heads-up display to the agent's lenses, capable of showing a digital map and even echoes. Frozen moments in time recreated using 3D holograms. Working together with the smartwatch is the Isaac Brick, the antenna on the backpack, which serves as a purpose of communicating with home base and other agents. The contact lenses are used in tandem with the watch and act as an additional scanner on top of what the watch's own scanning tag. This way agents can actually view the 3D holograms like echoes but also the armor and health on other agents. These features work on the ISAAC system. ISAAC, short for Intelligent System Analytic Computer, consolidates information from an array of sources and delivers it to the division in the field. The agent also has the repel tool and flare gun 
The first one for scaling buildings or other vertical surfaces and the second to notify the base to extract in the dark zone or call in for backup. For entering the contaminated zones like the dark zone, agents are equipped with a state-of-the-art mask that protects from breathing in harmful chemicals or virus strains. Shade technology brings with it a variety of skills as well, 12 to be exact. While some skills like the turret in Sicker Mine are a standard issue for all agents across the nation, it seems there's some variety between the available skills for the agents in New York City and in Washington. To quickly sum up the skills for Manhattan agents, they are the Pulse, First Aid, Support Station, Sticky Bomb, Turret, Seeker Mine, Ballistic Shield, Smart Cover, Mobile Cover, Recovery, Tactical and Survivor Link. Washington agents have on top of that the option to select the Hive, Chem Launcher and Drone. An agent's outfit consists of a thermal suit to keep them warm in the winter wonderland that is New York, as well as six gear pieces, the earlier mentioned mask and backpack, as well as a chest piece, holster, knee pads and gloves. And the final piece of their equipment are weapons, from which they can carry three at once, two primary weapons and a sidearm on top of it. While the United States were prepared, no one hoped that Directive 51 had to be activated yet. On Black Friday in 2016, Operation Black Winter became a reality. The Green Poison, an engineered variant of the smallpox, spread throughout the United States on the surface of banknotes. The situation got worse and worse to the point where the JTF couldn't handle it on their own. In response to the worsening pandemic, the SHD activated its first wave. These agents were sent to defend central Manhattan and aid the JTF where they needed it most. Yet, even the first wave was no match for the ensuing chaos. As the SHD operation failed and the JTF were forced to evacuate, many first wave agents were left to fend for themselves. Among them, Aaron Keener. Angered by the civilian and first wave casualties, as well as the betrayal of the division and JTF, Aaron Keener was the first agent to go rogue. He managed to persuade many others to follow him and kill those who divide him. Kinner came in contact with Charles Bliss, the leader of the Last Man Battalion, or LMB, and aligned his agents with the PMCs, him using Bliss's manpower while in return offering Shade Tech. At this point, the Division released the second wave, a part of the Division's history that should be quite familiar to you. Under leadership of Commander Chang, the second wave restored order to Brooklyn. Via a VTOL airship, the agent would have been transported to Manhattan, but the helicopter got shot down by a SAM system with, with the commander in it. Person responsible? Aaron Keener. Fei Lao took over command as she and the agent flew over to Manhattan and took control of the post office. Henceforward, the base of operations. From this point forward, the SHD operated to aid the JTF, reclaim New York City and defeat the enemy factions that were taking over Manhattan. Those factions being the Rioters, Rikers, Cleaners, Last Man Battalion and Rogue Agents. In the meantime, Aaron Keener discovered the location where the green poison was engineered, Amherst's lab. On the spot he found Amherst's notes and a 3D printer. The only thing left to do was finding someone who could engineer the virus. With Amherst being dead, Keener was looking towards Vitaly Chernenko, Amherst's partner in crime, who was holed up in the Russian consulate. The SHD went in to secure Chernenko and intercept Keener, but Keener's men managed to kidnap Chernenko on a chopper to the home base of the LMB. However, the JTF and SHD were quick to respond with an assault on their headquarters. Keener, being a wise strategist, saw the LMB was finished. He took Chernenko, Amherst's notes and a 3D printer and left Manhattan, leaving his two right-hand men to fend off the second wave agents. After that, the second wave went on with securing Manhattan, every so often being opposed by the earlier mentioned factions. They weren't a threat though. However, not long after, the SHD met their equals. While a massive blizzard was thundering outside, the analytics branch got a notification that there was a possible cure in the dark zone. By helicopter, the second wave went out there, but crashed outside of the dark zone. Under-equipped, the agents managed to retrieve the possible cure and went on to extract. However, as the flare lit up the darkened sky, the shade tech got jammed. Out of every corner, shadows crept up on the second wave agents moving from cover to cover. Glinting from the shoulder were smart watches as trophies. These shadows were fighting with the same shade tech powered skills. They were hunters. Ongoing battles ensue between these mysterious fighters and the SHD as they finally met their match. 
Seven months later, some of the second wave moved to Washington DC. It's the heart of summer and the SHD arrived to bring justice and order to the capital of the United States. The strategic homeland division, however, has been unrivaled in technology, strategy and their mission to restore Manhattan. Their story continues, but we'll have to wait for that. Let me know if you side with the strategic homeland division or any other faction in the game. And with that, I'm leaving you. Enjoy your day and I'll see you in the next video. This is Peaceful Panda. Peace out.